Who are we? Why are we here? And, and, uh, and so, how does it work? You know, and so I presented some of the systems thinking that if we are indeed, um, you know, stardust come to life, then we are indeed part of the ecosystems that the, the universe has evolved over 15 billion years since the Big Big Bang. If that's true, then these cycles of hope work just as well as these cycles of despair, these, cycles, these downward cycles. And I presented some thinking of, on systems thinking based on the ecological framework, how do we fit in the world? And so, then we get to the point of asking, so, what are the instructions? What are the rules? How do we know how to live? Anybody ever wake up in the morning thinking, like, everyone else has got a rule book on how to live except me. I don't really know how to get through life um, without uh, falling on my face and making mistakes and looking stupid and embarrassed all the time. You know, so what, what's the instruction manual for living? Well, if it's true that life has been evolving at least for, you know, four and a half billion years on this planet, uh, 15 billion years since the Big Bang, that's a lot of trial and error. A whole lot of testing has gone into the evolution of this planet, the evolution of life, and the, the emergence of conscious life um, on this planet. And if that's true, whether you believe in a, uh, a divine influence or simply trial and error, that's a lot of information that's been presented to us after 15 million years of trial and error on what works and what doesn't work. Maybe the Earth as our model, maybe this process of evolution as our model, might be able to teach us something about Instructions. How do we live? What are the rules? How do we how do we survive? There's parts of the planet that seem to be surviving very well without us, and we're not doing so good. So maybe we can learn something from these natural ecosystems. Then I want to, to pro propose for you some rules. What are the rules for living if we are indeed part of these larger ecosystems? What are the rules for e ecosystems to be sustainable? Well, here's three. Here are the three big ones. There are others, uh, but here's the three big ones. First, we must rely on sunlight. All energy is essentially solar. Cycle everything. Everything must cycle. Everything must must um, uh, be recycled and used again. Basic principle of ecology. And lastly, biological systems that are that are sustainable and last a long time are very diverse. There's a lot of different kinds of beings, a lot of different kinds of organisms in sustainable ecosystems. You think about uh, the tropical rainforest, for example. Think about the millions of different kind of you know plants and animals and bugs and microbes that make up those tropical rainforests. We need to be biologically diverse, and I believe in human systems we need to be socially just. And so we'll talk about these three rules and how they might apply to our lives as ecological beings. So let's look at a couple of things that I do for, um, to, to respect the ecological principle of uh, so, you know, using solar income. Now again, I offer these to you as not as prescriptions on how you should live your life, but simply descriptions on how I choose to live my life, the things that work for me. I'm really good at food, so I do a lot of food stuff. I have friends that are really good at energy. I have friends that are really good at transportation. Whatever it is for you to allow you to, uh, to uh, work with the ecological principle to use solar income. So I have a big garden. That's what I do. Um, you know, I grow lots and lots of vegetables. We got chickens in the backyard. We got uh, fruit trees. We got grapes. So we got blueberries over there. Uh, we got some flowers, you know, because that's important too. We grow some corn and things. I've got a little unheated hoop house in the backyard. Uh, this is not heated. I don't use any petroleum fuel. This is all, all solar power. You can see there's some uh, uh, tomato plants that are growing in there. I have tomatoes right up to about, the, about, about Christmas or so um, uh, in this unheated, this unheated hoop house. Uh, in the wintertime, we've got lettuce and greens growing in there. They go into uh, um, probably the middle of January, and they start to look really ratty in there because it gets kind of wet, and they don't look so good after that. But they actually live. And I take those greens with unheated, you know, no petroleum fuel going into this greenhouse, just solar income on it. You know, when the sun's shining, um, melting the snow off the greenhouse, and um, we take that and we feed it to the chickens. You know, I use solar solar uh, power to dry my clothes in the summertime. Uh, we use uh, wood heat to uh, supplement the heat in our house. These are uh, they cost about 10, 15 percent more than a typical good brand uh, washer dryer. These are German, German machines. Uh, you can see, uh, but but they're energy efficient. This front loader dr uh, washing machine, you know, the, the front loader uses, I think, was it 10 to 12 gallons of water per wash load compared to the top loader washes that use 40 gallons of water per wash load. You know, so it's, it's, it's a bit more efficient in resources. You can see it's set in cold water. Well, we just don't use hot water. That's where most of the energy goes into the, washing, the, wa the washer system. We use cold water. Uh, and then, of course, we're drying heavy clothes indoors. We put them on these racks by the wood stove so the jeans and the sweatshirts all go on there. And I'm not a fanatic. I don't, I don't take this to the extreme, and you know, and, and if I'm in a hurry, uh, you know, the socks and the underwear go in a very efficient dryer. The big stuff, though, will sit there on those racks next to the wood stove, puts humidity into the air, uh, which actually is kind of nice in the wintertime when the air gets kind of dry, 
from this roof spill in the basement. An old solar uh, panel on the roof. Um, I was wanting to put a solar panel on the roof several years ago, but I had to put a new roof on the house because the roof was sold. And so you can see up in the left-hand corner, we're putting a roof on the house. Uh, the solar panels on the lower uh, lower left-hand corner. You can see the big tank being taken down to the, into the basement uh, by the guys that were doing the install. Uh, this tank um, is heated uh, with uh, with solar power. From that tank, it goes into my hot water heater. So it goes into my gas hot water heater, hot water heater, uh, high enough to be just used the way it is. When the sun's shining, um, the, the gas hot water heater doesn't turn on at all because the water going into it has already been preheated by solar power. Um, if a, a day like that, when it's really cloudy, um, the gas hot water heater will kick on and provide hot water so because we're not getting any solar. Um, I also have this, uh, this uh, on the lower right hand side, uh, the guys have the hot tub all taken apart. That's also heated with, with uh, solar hot water when the sun's shining. And so, you know, I am not an ecological um, uh, role model. I am a sinner. Uh, and what we try to do is to move our lives in a direction that's more consistent with ecological principles a little bit at a time. So we try to make efforts to, to acknowledge that we are ecological beings, and the primary source of energy for us must continue, it's not today, but it must continue to move closer and closer to more and more solar and less fossil fuels. Ecological rule number one, use solar energy. <laughs>